I don't know why I'm alive, actually. Um, there isn't a magic cure. I think it's a combination of lots of different things. I would ask you to introduce a little bit uh, about your background, what you do, and why you are passionate about the topic. So, Deborah, would you share a little bit? <laughs> Absolutely. So I'm um, the end user. Um, I am a patient. I live, and I use that word very specifically, I live with metastatic bowel cancer. So in terms of my background, um, I was a um, educator. I was a deputy head teacher of a secondary school, um, passionate about education. I was training to be a head teacher, um, about to take on my headship. And then I got totally and utterly blindsided at the age of 35 and um, being told that I had metastatic cancer. I have BRAF, metastatic cancer. By the time I was diagnosed, um, I had a um, large tumor in my bowel and eight tumors in my lungs. Um, I was told I probably wouldn't see out <laughs> the, the year. Um, and I'm alive four years later, which is quite amazing. Um, I'm alive because of research. I have hope because of research. It's very much under control, touch wood at the moment, and that is very much in part to a triplet of targeted therapy that I'm on for my BRAF tumour. Yeah, I've had lots of different operations, bowel resections, lung resections. I've just undergone a VATS resection of my mediastinal area because I had some lymph nodes in there. I've had cyber knife treatment. I've had a lot of chemotherapy. Unfortunately, I've also lost a lot of friends along the way. So um, I've had to say goodbye to people diagnosed at the same time as me who are not here. So I appreciate the fact that uh, I don't know why I'm alive, actually. Um, there isn't a magic cure. I think it's a combination of lots of different things. Um, my next hope is that some of my tissue that has just been removed from my body is currently in a lab, hopefully, um, fingers crossed, growing into an organoid um, that we will then be able to maybe uh, see how we can keep uh, me ticking a little bit longer down the road. What I suppose I've learned from it is my passion for education, I suppose, has just been transferred into a different climate. But I realised that actually there's a massive need for educating um, just on a different level about cancer. So I was, um, you know, an educated young female who had, didn't have a clue about what cancer looked like, felt like. And I thought it happened to other people. Um, I was that person who ticked no boxes. I was a fit vegetarian um, working mum who was just tired and had IBS, apparently. Um, it, it wasn't that. So if it can happen to me, it can happen to anyone. And we all know that early diagnosis is key. So I now write and broadcast um, and kind of it is my job, but I feel it's an education. I feel I'm a teacher um, essentially with what I'm doing. And I'm passionate about raising awareness, about um, also translating the brilliant hope and science that goes on behind cancer to the general public, because I think there's a lot of miseducation out there about kind of what a cure might look like or what living with cancer looks like. Um, and I'm very grateful to be taking part in these conversations because this is where change can happen. Uh, Deborah, it's, it's, it's really inspiring uh, to to see how you've transformed this into more teaching and more engagement. Uh, Deborah, you just keep on fighting that good fight. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> so I wish I'd been at Deborah's school uh, because the way you explain things and the enthusiasm that you transmit about the message that you have, somber though it may be, is fantastic. Thank you so much, Deborah. And it's wonderful to have you here. We need role models like Deborah because we need to raise the awareness that patients that are diagnosed with cancer are normal, beautiful, energetic people that have a normal life, that are still mothers, that are still wives and husbands, that are still parents, that are still teachers or whatever they are. And I think that patients need to know that, I mean, it's worth to fight. Look at you.